Um, so I am going to move that Senate file 2130 be re referred to the general register. Um, I almost called for a vote, but that's not where we are. <laughs> My apologies. Um, so uh, several authors have submitted testimony and just to reflect refresh everybody's memories. This is the local liquor omnibus bill. We have heard most of these provisions um, in uh, the, the prior uh, legislative year. Um, there are a few new provisions and things we haven't heard before our committee. Um, and so before we begin testimony, we have some authors who have submitted testimony in writing instead of joining the call, either because they've been heard before or because they've talked to uh, members of the committee. Um, so your packets, your uh, electronic packets from Simon will have that testimony. Um, and the letters that have been submitted in support of these local um, provisions. Um, we also have an amendment um, to uh, get the bill in the shape that the author wants. And just for everybody's knowledge, so um, we have been working for several weeks with our um, pa partners in the Senate to um, go through all of the lo local provisions, make sure everybody's local provisions that um, can be um, heard and passed in both bodies are part of this bill. Um, and so uh, we have worked through um, our, all of the language with the Senate, and um, they are in agreement with which is what with what is on our list. So the DE amendment includes all of that language. So I will move the DE two amendment to get the bill in the shape I would like. Um, uh, discussion to that motion, Representative O. Driscoll. Thank you, Madam Chair. I just wanted to, before we moved on, um, I maybe want to just put the bill in the shape that you want. I just want to make some comments about the work that was done on this bill as well um, before we before we get too far beyond that. But let's just take care of the business at hand. And if you would, then just come back. That'd be great. And um, we have the DE2 amendment in front of us before um, we adopt that. Uh, Representative Tice is going to also offer um, the A19 amendment. Um, this uh, goes to exactly what you're talking about, Representative O'Driscoll, that there's uh, been uh, a lot of work on this bill and there was a little cleanup needed in one provision for St. Cloud that Representative Wogelmont was carrying and Representative Tice has generously offered um, to uh, carry that amendment to committee. So Representative Tice, do you have anything else to say to the A19 amendment? Would you like to move that? I would like to move the A19. Uh, this addresses part of the MAC. The MAC is the Municipal Athletic Complex in St. Cloud. It has an ice arena and then it has two baseball fields, Faber Field and Putz Field. Uh, we did some legislation for Putz Field and for the uh, St. Cloud Rocks baseball team. But now what we're doing now is adding some of the other teams that play at the fields and that would allow them to have alcohol such as the state baseball tournaments. Uh, they have a lot of regional and state tournaments that happen during the summertime. And what this do will, would allow them to sell um, alcohol as well. And it's, it's a, you know, it's a good thing for the stadium. They've been looking for this for a while. So thank you for your time. And I hope for your yes vote. Is there any discussion to the motion to adopt the A19 amendment to the DE2? Uh, any discussion? Seeing no hands raised for discussion, all those in favor of the A19 amendment, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion prevails and the amendment to the DE2 amendment is adopted. So we are back on the DE2 <laughs> amendment as discussion. Seeing no discussion, all those in favor of the DE adopting the DE2 amendment as amended, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any, op any opposed? Hearing no opposition, the motion is uh, prevails and the amendment is adopted. The bill is before us as e amended. Representative O'Driscoll. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, the uh, reason we're using a Senate file on this bill is last year we did not do a local liquor bill and the Senate had sent a version of what they wanted to do and didn't do a liquor no, I wouldn't bill. want to do I think some rock picking assignments are being done on the Swazinski farm I'm not a hundred percent sure but um 
<laughs> the uh, the Senate file is what we're going to send back to the Senate, and there will be no hearing on this bill in the Senate. They've agreed that if we send it to them with the Tice Amendment and with the provisions that are in the bill right now, they will um, take it up as a message from the House, and then they will move to pass that bill. And that is one of the reasons why Chair Halverson is also gracious enough to allow those who might not have been covered by this bill, but still have liquor questions and issues to address the committee prior to taking up this bill. And with that, Madam Chair, um, I will turn uh, back to you. Thank you. Thank you, Representative O'Driscoll, and thank you um, for uh, working so hard to uh, make sure that everything was covered. I know you did a lot of outreach to your caucus. I did a lot of outreach to my caucus to make sure that we had all the liquor, uh, the local provisions that we could find in here. So I appreciate your partnership on that. Um, so the bill is before us as amended, and we have a few uh, members on the call who would like to speak to the provisions in the bill that haven't been heard yet before our committee. Um, I have Representative Grosso on the list to talk about language from his House File uh, 4002, and he has a testifier, uh, Mr. Uh, Lyon, who had a handout submitted online. So, Representative Grosso, are you on the line? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, and uh, it's uh, uh, Miss Lyon. And she's the arena director, Sam Lyon. My apologies, and, uh, Ms. Lyon. I think she'll let it slide. <laughs> but uh, the Lake of the, the, I'm asking for a temporary license for Lake of the Woods the County. Uh, the Lake of the Woods County, uh, an issue of temporary license to pursuant to the uh, law for premises of the Bodet Arena Association, yeah, without regard to restriction. and. Uh, Sam is here to testify uh, on behalf of that, if I could turn it over to her. Absolutely. Ms. Lyon, uh, welcome to the committee. You can state your name for the record and proceed with your testimony. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, uh, my name is Samantha Lyon. I'm the arena director for the Baudette Arena Association, which governs and operates the Lake of the Woods International Arena. Um, the International Arena is a brand new $7 million facility here up here in Vedette, which is a hockey arena, but also community center and function space for a, a small rural community up here. Um, we just finished our first successful hockey season, so we're excited, excited about that. We finished construction in April of 2019. Um, in the visioning of this building, they uh, constructed it right next to our school. And we have one school in the county, uh, pre-K through 12th grade. And the thought was that in building it next to the school, we'd have a, a complex of sorts that would not only increase opportunity for kids to play hockey, which is a big deal up here, but also opportunity for kids in FIED and after school to partake in what um, the activities that are happening here, whether that's hockey or open skating or boom ball. Um, so the school sold us the land for a dollar and then proceeded to um, work out an arrangement uh, between the two organizations. So we are an independent nonprofit. Um, one of the documents you've got in front of you is a, our user agreement with the school. In that agreement, the arena identified an additional revenue source as a function space, whether that was uh, reunions or weddings, senior hockey tournaments, um, often which of which those events uh, have alcohol at them. So given that the school supported the serving of alcohol in this building um, with specific stipulations, prior uh, approval from the school board, which included um, approval from our superintendent who checked dates, things like that, all with, uh, all to keep in mind a priority of our safety of our students, right? Um, so you'll see that in the user agreement. I think it's page two, it's highlighted there. Um, and then the additional document is a more recent letter from our superintendent renewing his support for this. Um, so we had our first wedding scheduled for this past for this upcoming summer and in attempting to get a temporary liquor license through our county came up against a statute that said there couldn't be the serving of alcohol within 1500 feet of a school. And so we tried to kind of navigate that world and see if there were any other avenues for us, but really couldn't come up with any options. And so I'm here today to ask for an exemption to that statute um, on three, on kind of the, with the three bases. bases. One, that the school is, supports our efforts in this. 
um, any event that special event that we would have would require their approval um, and they would have you know a veto power if anything were to not comply with their wishes two that these are not this is not a standing bar or restaurant or liquor store this is a this would be for special events maybe numbering as many as three a year and of course all of those would be approved by the school and third that it would we would still apply for a temporary license through the county. We're not in city limits, we're outside city limits. So we'd apply through the county, which would mean that all we'd, we would still fall under all the regulations that a county would require. So things like licensed bartenders, notification of the sheriff's department, um, any other res, uh, regulations that the county would um, impose. Um, and so I appreciate your time in considering us um, for this and would, offer any an opportunity for any questions that you might have um, regarding this issue. Thank you for your time, Madam Chair. Thank you for your testimony, Ms. Lyon. Uh, are there any uh, member questions to the author or the testifier? I'm seeing no hands raised. Um, if uh, there is a delay in being recognized members, um, by all means, um, let me know. Um, but with that, I think you explained, you, it's evidence you explained yourself well, Ms. Lyons. So you. <laughs> stand by for questions <laughs> if they come up. Thank you for your testimony. Yep. And uh, any last word, Representative Grassel? Uh, yes, Madam Chair. Uh, and thank you for giving us the time and allowing us to testify today. Uh, a facility, facility like this is, is very important to a rural area and to be able to maximize the use of its facilities. Uh, you know, it's, it's not only a benefit to the, to the uh, just the Baudet city or the school the school district, it is a, it's a regional, it's a regional uh, benefit. So uh, to be able to use it for as many things as possible to uh, help support it, um, this, would, this would be a, a great benefit. So thank you. Thank you for your uh, testimony and for bringing it to our committee. Um, next on the list, I see Representative Poppy uh, with language from House File 2175. There is a letter in your packet. Uh, Representative Poppy, did you want to speak to your uh, section of this bill? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair and members of the committee. Um, yes, this is a um, on-sale license for um, the Austin Bruins and the Rochester Grizzlies, and they're both junior hockey teams that play, um, they share some um, ownership is shared um, between those two. That's why they're linked together. And what they do is um, as a junior hockey team, those young men uh, play to showcase their talents for NCAA schools. And the Austin Bruins, I can speak to them for the, over the past 10 years, they've raised over $375,000 for different charities. They have been very active in, um, we have a Paint the Rink Pink event that's held in February that raises um, funds for the Hormel Institute, which is a cancer research institute here in Austin. And um, they rely on income from ticket and beverage sales to operate both franchises. So the addition of wine and regular beer for them to be able to sell will offer fans more options. And they are... Um, certainly um, well, well respected and well um, appreciated in our communities. So I would ask them for your support. I appreciate that they are included in the bill and uh, would just ask that um, they remain there and appreciate the opportunity today to offer my support for this effort for the Austin Bruins and the Rochester Grizzlies. Thank you for uh, sharing your story about your community with us, Representative Poppy. Are there questions from members? I will wait for hands. My only question is for uh, Travis Reese. I'm, I'm now curious what percentage of these uh, projects are have some connection to hockey. It's, it's, it feels like a pretty Minnesota <laughs> discussion so far. Um, seeing no questions, thank you, Representative Poppy, for describing your project. Thank you, Madam um, Chair. Members, thank you. The next person on the list, we have uh, Representative Davney with his language from House File 32, 3283. You also have a letter in your packet about that. Representative Davney. 
Uh, good afternoon, Madam Chair and members. Uh, this uh, proposal is different from the previous ones because, in fact, it does not have a connection that I'm aware of too high. Uh, but instead, maybe uh, football, the Mississippi River, and uh, sculpture. Uh, the, the provision that's in the bill, and thank you for including it, allows the Minneapolis Park Board liquor licenses for events at the Commons, the Sculpture Garden, and Boom Island Parks. Uh, while the immediate future doesn't likely include large gatherings at these parks, uh, envisioned as, as opportunities for our hospitality and convention and visitor, visitor industries to use these parks to uh, attract uh, folks to Minneapolis and to Minnesota, uh, this does provide an opportunity for enhancing the experience of those visitors at these parks in uh, likely uh, structured events, uh, like after a as part of a convention experience or the like. Uh, it would provide an additional revenue stream for the Minnesota, Minneapolis, excuse me, Park Board, uh, that although small would help to bolster park revenues, which are under considerable stress in the current economic climate. Uh, it's a great opportunity to uh, support both the park board and employment in the hospitality industry that is feeling uh, pretty stressed these days. And I appreciate uh, consideration and inclusion. Thank you, Representative Daphne. Are there any questions for Representative Daphne? You could potentially flood the commons, I suppose, and play hockey, Representative Daphne, but uh, I'll leave that to the park. I, I wouldn't Madam, uh, give Madam Chair? ideas. Madam Chair, this is Representative Mahoney. Representative Mahoney, I'm sorry. Representative... Yes, uh, so um, to the author of the bill or the amendment, did you say there's no hockey engaged in this particular bill of yours? Representative uh, Daphne. Uh, Madam Chair, uh, Representative Mahoney, not that I'm aware of, no. Uh, Representative Mahoney. Well, I'll probably, thank you, Madam Chair. I'm, I'm, you know, I am a member of multiple art organizations in St. Paul and Minneapolis, but I want you to know that I'll probably have to vote against your bill because I'd much rather go to a hockey game. No, I'm just... Thank you, Ms. Madam Chair, for indulging Rep me. Representative Mahoney, we hear your good humor in uh, your statement, and uh, thank you very much. Representative Daphne, uh, let's see, members, any other questions? Representative Daphne, we thank you for uh, describing your project and, and bringing it to um, our committee. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. And next members. up, Representative Lilly, House File 2433. Um, if oh, you'd like, to... hey, you're welcome to the committee. Welcome Thank back you. to the committee. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Chair and uh, members. Uh, um, it is nice to be back. Uh, Chair Halverson, uh, congratulations on uh, running a good committee and uh, through the session and good luck on your new journey as you move uh, on to new adventures. But uh, um, yeah. Um, and thank you, staff. I especially want to point out uh, your superstar there, uh, uh, Mr. McCormick, who uh, if anytime you go to a gopher football game uh, and raise a beer uh, at the stadium there, you can think of uh, legislation that we passed years ago. So look at he's covered his face. But um, <laughs> that was some good work that this committee did years ago. So anyways, uh, this this uh, this provision is pretty straightforward. It's uh, a couple of years ago in the Twin Cities Marathon, we added that people could get a beverage when you've uh, completed the Twin Cities Marathon, and uh, and it's kind of nice. You go uh, again. There's no hockey. It's kind of the opposite, I suppose. But uh, you come down the big hill from the cathedral, and you get down to the end there, and you might want to uh, raise a toast with your friend or uh, have a beverage and. So we did that a couple of years ago, but this this provision which you're adding, and thank you for doing it because it, it's really nice and it's very popular. So it adds it to the Saturday events. The marathon's on Sunday, but there's a bunch of events on Saturday, and and thousands and thousands of people participate. And that's the you know the 5K and the the 10 mile race. And uh, so this this provision will allow the same thing that goes on Sunday and has proved not to be a problem. And uh, so in 
you come across the line, you could maybe raise a toast and, you know, clang a glass with someone else or a piece of plastic, I guess. But no, uh, thank you for doing that. And uh, I, I think it's a, it's a good provision. And I think, uh, again, the other, the other one on Sunday has been really popular and really hasn't been a, a problem. Most people like myself, when I finished marathons are lucky to be able to walk back to my car and uh, <laughs> on my own two feet, much less being uh, under the influence. But no, thank you, thank you. Uh, thank you, Representative Lilly. Um, any questions for Representative Lilly members? Not seeing anything, so thanks for bringing it to our committee and- uh, I, I would be happy to talk about hockey though, if you want to. Uh, uh, John Lush, uh, John Lush plays hockey, but I'm not sure you'd have much to say. <laughs> well, I let my skate and do the talking, Lily. Uh, Ma Madam Chair, it seems like we've broken down with the quorum, so oh, okay. I would hope that everybody would go through the chair. Sorry, sorry Mr. Uh, Madam Chair. Thank you sorry. for thank you for that stern warning, Representative Dean. Um, I love representative Lily, thank you for describing your project for us. Um, we have um, also, uh, I'm not sure if Representative Bo is on the call, but he does have a provision 4482, House Bill 4482. No, Madam Chair, I never heard back from Representative okay. Bo. Oh, representative O'Driscoll. Representative Bo's absence, um, I told him that I would be happy to speak to, to that provision, just again, to help expedite things of our liquor bill discussion in happy hour time on a Friday. You and I talked about that earlier, the irony <laughs> of, of the timing of the meeting, but that notwithstanding, in the city of Chaska, there is a ball team, baseball team called the Chaska Cubs, and the local brewer down there has developed a special beer called the Chaska Cubs beer, and in order to be able to sell that product, at the stadium that the um, Cubs play, a special liquor license is needed to be issued to the city of Chaska for this mm -hmm. purpose. And that is um, keeping in the theme of the day. So that is the extent of Representative Bowles' request today. Thank you. I'm happy to see baseball represented. Um, any questions for Representative Driscoll about Representative Bowles' proposal? Representative Driscoll, I'm not seeing any. So you can tell Representative Bo you. Uh, you represented him well at the, <laughs> at the committee. And if you would like to keep the floor and describe the provisions in the bill that uh, you are carrying, um, we'd love to hear them. Um, the provisions that I have is uh, two of them. One um, for the city of Forest Lake, and you may be saying, does your district really go down to Forest Lake? And the answer is no. I was asked to, to um, author this by another member who does represent that area because of my involvement in the committee. And it has to do again with a municipally owned um, or connected uh, golf course that needs to have a license in order to be able to sell alcohol, again, in keeping with the theme of the day. The second provision that I have is a correction for the city of Sartell. Uh, we did this a couple of years ago, giving them permission at their new community center and a uh, ballpark facility to be able to offer alcohol for sale. Uh, when they tried to uh, uh, move forward with their liquor control, said the city had to have the license. The city's hope was to provide that um, license to another to be able to be a vendor. The city wants to be in the business of city, and they would like to have the vendor be in the business of being a vendor. And Madam Chair, if I could also speak to one other provision, and that is my work in the pensions world, and that's uh, Representative Murphy's provision. And that prov provision um, talks about um, the fact that Gadsby, which is a bookkeeping requirement, says that the, from the federal level requires all cities, counties, and publicly owned facilities to book on their records costs of pensions, but it's more of a memorializing, and it really doesn't have a financial impact on the viability or um, uh, liquidity of the, the municipal liquor store. And we have another provision in state law that says if your liquor store is running a deficit, then you have to decide whether to keep that. And the reason it could be showing that it's running a deficit is because of these phantom pension costs that have to be booked on the uh, local municipalities books, but they actually pay those fees to the state of Minnesota. And the state of Minnesota is the ultimate guarantor of pensions. I know I put about two thirds of people to sleep on a Friday afternoon with that, but sometimes people wanna know why is there a pension provision in a liquor bill? That's why there's a, a pension provision in the liquor bill. That is a great explanation. You did, you did a wonderful job with that. Are there any questions for Representative Driscoll on his proposals? 
I think I would like to try to stump Greg Davids and ask him who the Forest Lake uh, sports, uh, high school sports team is, because I think I'd stump him on that one. He's pretty good around the state, but I think I could get him on, the, on Forest Lake. So we'll let him answer another time. <laughs> Representative O'Driscoll, thank you. Uh, Representative, thank you. Uh, Representative Lesh is going to explain House File 4040 um, and for his provision for St. Paul. Representative Lesh. Hi, uh, thank you, Madam Chair. So House File 4040, um, you all just received documents from it by email, provides the opportunity for St. Paul restaurant owners to participate in the new business model of food halls with liquor service. You may recall that we did this it was either last year or the year before for Minneapolis for a property over by Surly. Um, so the food halls with liquor service, is, it's a new business model. It's occurring locally and nationally. If you go to places like uh, the Wharf in Washington, D.C., I know there's a place in Seattle, um, have these. But Minnesota statute prevents the food halls from having liquor service because no one can leave a licensed liquor establishment with an alcoholic beverage and alcohol beverage or beverages are allowed in common space are not allowed in common spaces. So the city of Minneapolis got this at, for a food hall at 501 30th Avenue Southeast up by Surly and the St. Paul language reflects or mirrors that language that you already passed. So it would allow people to walk around in the food hall and the food hall would hold the license. You could take your beer to the cheese stand or I actually, I don't know. I don't go to a lot of these food halls. I'm not a hipster. So I assume there's like a cheese stand and like a burger place or something, but you can go to each one of them and get your burger and, uh, and bring your beer with you. That's the point of it. Uh, so our request request is to amend the statute to allow St. Paul to issue an on sale intoxicating liquor license to a licensee serving as an anchor tenant or the umbrella operator. So the food hall itself, uh, which contains restaurants and closes by midnight. The license can allow uh, service and consumption anywhere within the food hall itself if uh, consumption of the licensed beverage sold by the, the license holder is within a food establishment or common areas of the premises. And that's, uh, that's what it is, Madam Chair and members. So I would stand for questions. Thank you, Representative um, Lesh. I don't see anybody raising their hand. I do want to say that uh, Representative Katiza Watoon has uh, joined the meeting. So just so we have that on record and welcome Representative Katiza Watoon. Thank you, Representative Lesh, for explaining your bill. Thank you. Any, while I had the, the floor, uh, Madam Chair, I wonder if you could, uh, I could beg your indulgence for this. I didn't speak earlier when um, the uh, presenter from the Distillers Guild was speaking, but I'm looking out my window and I can see the house of Phil Steger, who owns uh, Brother Justice Whiskey. Uh, and between them and Tattersall and Denor, they donated 40,000 gallons of hand sanitizer uh, to folks who needed it in Minnesota this year. And I remember that because I've talked to Phil routinely. Uh, 17 hospitals, 230 nursing homes, 200 gallons to the Department of Corrections. 50 fire and police departments, 51 homeless shelters, 100 group homes and 90 medical clinics. And that's something that I really hope we can find a way to recognize for these folks. They stepped up to the plate uh, when it was needed and they haven't gotten a lot back. So I just wanted to offer that. Hi, Phil. Oh, and by the way, you can get through a Commerce Committee hearing without a glass of Brother Justice in front of you, but it's not recommended. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and thank you for recognizing that um, great work with the hand sanitizers. That's something special. And anything else, members, for this particular provision? Seeing nobody raise their hand on that, uh, Representative O'Neill um, is here and will uh, discuss House File uh, 3840. Thank you, Madam Chair. So I have a little fishing tournament out here on Maple Lake. It's actually a pretty big fishing tournament. And it got so big that they wanted to change how they organized. Um, but in doing so, they, because they've been doing it for nearly 30 years, they kind of made a little mistake. And they created a whole new organization as opposed to just changing their name, which I think 
was their intent to kind of acknowledge this new fishing tournament. And as you know, there's a three way, three year waiting period to get a liquor license and you have a new organization. They didn't realize that that's what they had actually done. And so this gets them a bridge so that they can get to their three years of this new organization that really is a 30 year old fishing tournament that's been around. And so this is just a bridge for them to be able to do that, um, acknowledging their current nonprofit organization, um, and getting them to that three year point. And that's it. Very good. Thank you, Representative O'Neill. Any questions for Representative O'Neill? Seeing none, thank you so much. Good luck on the water. Um, Representative Cresha is uh, hopefully with us and can uh, describe House File uh, 2142. Thank you, Madam Chair. I hope you can hear me okay. Uh, this is great. a provision for Piers City, which is in my district for the golf course. And I greatly appreciate you including it. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Representative Cresha. Any questions uh, for the representative? I don't see any. That was um, some excellent testimony, sir. Uh, finally, I think I think finally, but uh, we'll see. Representative Carlson has two provisions in the bill: House File 2290 and House File 4401. Uh, representative Carlson. Representative Carlson, are you on? Travis, do we know where he is? Is he? It says that he's on. It says that he's on and unmuted. So I'm not sure if he's just not near his phone or not. I know that uh, they did have a testifier here, Ed Reynoso from the Teamsters, can talk about 4401, and that I don't know if you want to talk about 2290, which is the airport uh, provision. So we'll start with 4401 with uh, Ed Reynoso from Teamsters. Excellent. I can do that. Oops. I'm going to be okay. Uh, Ed, uh, Mr. Reynoso, how, uh, you have the floor. You want to tell Thank us about House File 4401. Thank you, Madam Chair uh, and members of the committee. My name is Edward Reynoso. I'm the political director for Teamsters Joint Council 32. Uh, we represent in excess of 62,000 active and retired members in the, in the state of Minnesota and uh, many within the liquor industry itself. You know, this, this uh, amendment uh, fixes a loophole that was um, that came from the Sunday sales uh, that allowed uh, uh, liquor stores to open up on Sundays. Uh, when we passed it, when it was passed, should I say, um, one of the reasons we got out of the way and, and we didn't oppose it uh, was that we were able to secure the, the banning of deliveries on Sundays. That was always one of the concerns that our members had. Uh, what we didn't do is, is make sure that we covered all the bases. Uh, it just included banning deliveries to off-sale uh, establishments and didn't include on-sale. Uh, so this basically is, is it takes care of uh, a loophole in, this, in statute. And uh, I don't think there's any opposition or, or we've not heard of any or any concerns. In fact, uh, with, with my colleagues on the Liquor Coalition, which represents the the wholesalers and the retailers uh, there's no opposition from them either so it's it's uh, just a a minor adjustment and uh, a minor change and i'm open for questions if there are any very good thank you for uh describing that section of the uh bill are there any questions for mr reynoso don't see any hands raised so thank you for for that um testimony I can, unless Ms., unless Representative Carlson is back. Oh, I'm here. Representative Carlson, excellent, welcome. Um, so Rep., uh, Mr. Reynoso uh, described the um, uh, House File 4401, but if you could describe a uh, House File 2290 that you have in the bill, uh, which deals with um, the, the airport, we would appreciate hearing about that. Yeah, so for members, you may recall, this is a bill we uh, heard last year as well. Uh, obviously, being an airport, uh, the time of uh, the time of being open is, is uh, you know, uh, is what this bill really talks about. Um, other than the testimony that was given for last year, the bill is unchanged. Uh, happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Representative Carlson. Are there questions? 
on that particular provision. I'm not seeing any uh, one ask for recognition. Um, so thank you for that. Um, and we are to the end of the list that I have. Is there any additional um, testimony um, for uh, in regard to uh, House File 21, excuse me, Senate File 2130? I'm not seeing or hearing from anybody. So. Um, Members, are there any questions or discussions before we move to a vote? Again, I'm not seeing or hearing any uh, member discussion, so we are ready to move to a vote. Um, oh, Representative Mahoney. No, ma'am. Okay. Nothing Sorry. to say here. Sorry, just wanted to be sure that I was covering all the bases there. Um, so with that, um, I'm going to renew my motion that Senate file 2130 as amended be re referred to the general register. All those in favor can signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Are we We're voting the on the actual uh, bill before us? Yeah. Yes. Um, on my other conference committee, or on my Zoom calls, we have to do a roll call on the final vote of the bill. We're in the middle of the vote, actually, Representative Dean. So okay. let's, you can, you can bring a point of order after we're done. Any opposed? A hearing no opposition, um, the motion prevails. Representative Dean. Uh, just what I said previously in the middle of the motion, I, I apologize, but all my Zoom committees on final vote of bill, we've had to do roll call. I, I don't know if that's set up in the rules or how where it exists, but you know I, I'm sure with no opposition, I I don't think anybody would bring up an issue of procedure. Representative Odrisco. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Chair Dean's advice is probably well taken given the circumstances. Uh, two yes votes on this bill, one verbally and one by roll call. Make sure we've got it taken care of. It'll only take just a moment to run through the roster, but that's my advice, Madam Chair. Uh, thank you, Representative O'Driscoll. And um, from the uh, standpoint of rules and, and uh, what we'd established in previous um, Commerce Committees uh, for members uh, to refresh members' uh, memories is that we established uh, that House rules allowed us to do voice votes and we could move forward with voice votes. Representative O'Driscoll requests a roll call. Um, is this going to be a roll call or a division, Travis, after we voted? Representative O'Driscoll. Madam Chair, procedurally, a division would, would put a record on it, would just tell us whether or not we had the votes. Um, again, I, all I'm offering it is, is that we have our belt and suspenders approach because of the timeliness of this, how close we are to the end of session. Um, I don't want the, the discussion on whether we should to take longer than actually doing a roll call vote, so I'll defer to the chair. <laughs> we can um, certainly move to a roll call. Travis, is there anything that prevents us from doing that? Not that I'm aware of. I think we would need to do the roll call just to establish even the division. And so we'll take down the roll and then clarify with um, leadership and rules on what needs to be noted in the minutes, whether it's a division or an actual roll call, and make sure that's that it's correct in the minutes um, when, before we approve them at the next hearing. Thank you, Travis. So with that, and a roll call having been requested, uh, Simon can take the roll. Mr. Halverson. Aye. Vice Chair Stevenson. Aye. Representative O'Driscoll. Aye. Representative Carlson. Aye. Representative Davids. Aye. Representative Dean. Aye. Representative Elkins. Aye. Representative Garofalo. Yes. Representative Haley. Aye. Representative Howard. Yes. Representative Cotiz Watoon. Aye. Representative Creshaw. Aye. Representative Lesh. Aye. Representative Lislagard. Aye. Representative Mahoney. Aye. Representative O'Neill. Aye. Representative Richardson. Aye. Representative Swazinski. Aye. Representative Tabkey. Aye. Representative Tice. Aye.
There being 20 ayes and zero nays, uh, the uh, motion prevails and Senate file 2130 is on its way to the general register. Thank you.